Inside Elon Musk's $250 million all-electric superyacht, launched by FedShip Steve Rye's shipyard in 2015, Savannah is one of the most spectacular vessels afloat. Mixing powerful yet elegant design with impeccable eco-credentials, she is FedShip's first-ever hybrid superyacht. With clean and quiet electric diesel performance allied to an extremely efficient hull design for sublime and conscientious cruising. Rumored to be owned by Tesla CEO Elon Musk, let's step aboard this visually stunning work of engineering. One of the world's largest metallic painted objects and easily the most impressive, the Savannah Superyacht makes a statement whenever she sails. Guests will enjoy untold luxuries across her four decks and six cabins connected by a dramatic rosewood spiral staircase. The interior of this superyacht features dark rosewood floors throughout with beautiful furnishings, atmospheric dimensions, and breathtaking vistas thanks to its peerless use of glass. With six chic and suite cabins, Savannah Yacht can welcome up to 12 guests on board. Located on the upper deck of the owner's suite, a luxurious, light-filled private space linked to a spacious outdoor seating area, dining room, and office. Situated in the middle of this stunning superyacht is a state-of-the-art elevator, giving you easy access to each of the four decks. Guests can travel from the panoramic views of the main deck to the comforts of the underwater lounge at the touch of a button. Each cabin and lounge have been designed to maximize the visual and human experience, the awe-inspiring underwater lounge and master suite with its wall of glass and vast oval skylight, being two notable moments in this yacht's interior history. This yacht features a 30-foot swimming pool, an entire beach club, a private sun deck with a DJ station and barbecue, a gym, and a spa. Savannah is also notable for her extensive modern art collection, voted Motor Yacht of the Year at the 2016 World Super Yacht Awards, and having won three prestigious awards at the 2016 Showboats Design Awards, the yacht is one of the most innovative and iconic vessels on the water, and she is yours to experience. The master suite is located below deck amidships and is the entire width of the beam. The cabin has a king bed and his and hers end suite head with a large Euro shower. The VIP cabin has queen-sized bed and is located below deck to the port with end suite head with shower. The guest queen stateroom is below decked aft port and can convert to twins beds if necessary and has an end suite head with shower. The final room is a twin cabin and is below deck to the starboard. This cabin also has an end suite head with a shower, but her dimensions aren't the real highlight. Savannah features a first of its kind hybrid power plant and an interior and exterior design by Christina Garardi Benardu and Marcella Bazzarelli of CG Design in Paris, working on only their second super yacht. Initially known for designing retail spaces such as the Virgin Mega stores and Kenzo shops in France, Garardi moved into luxury brands as director of architecture worldwide for Christian Dior Couture. She founded the Giorgi Armani interior design studios in New York and Milan and worked for Armani Casa on the interior of the 49-meter Christensen motor yacht Odessa. In fact, it was the request from Odessa's owner to design his next yacht, Savannah, that inspired her to set up her own studio in 2011. Unconstrained by decades of immersion in yachting tradition, CG design brought fresh eyes and curiosity to the project. Odessa's layout has been fixed by the time Girardi joined that project. This time, she was free to work up the arrangement as per her client's brief. The most mind-boggling expression of this is Savannah's main deck, which exists as an open space. The saloon is on the same level as the pool and, with the sliding, curved glass weathertight doors open and stacked invisibly out of the way, it is essentially a covered outdoor extension of the weather deck. Guests entering via the main lobby are greeted by the smaller of the two main deck lounges and a central staircase which is allowed to unwind lazily thanks to Savannah's ample beam. A curved wall guides guests forward down a corridor to five spacious suites. Here, the walls and bedheads are gently curved at the edges, creating glamorous cocoons with wool and silk carpets, velvet upholstered bed frames, and floor-length silk curtains, heightening the effect. The bedhead wall appears to stand free of the structure, creating interesting opportunities for indirect lighting. 
It's a continuation of the profile of Savannah herself, with a superstructure that seems to float owing to complex visual trickery involving polished stainless steel strips, aluminum supports, and teak. Savannah's Lightning Plan is one of the most sophisticated ever engineered into a yacht. CG Design worked with a highly regarded consultant, Metis Lighting of Milan, to develop the light concept and the various fixtures, some of which have up to 10 colors, lens types, and positions. All of the LED indoor and outdoor strip lighting was custom made by Total Lux. While Savannah is very bright by day, thanks to the tremendous amount of wall glass and skylights, she takes on a soft, slightly mysterious appeal at night. However, there is nothing mysterious about the double-height video monitors lining the passage between the two saloons on the main deck and the catwalk connecting the saloon and dining area of the owner's deck. The screens can be static or flowing with a changing abstract images all programmed into the computer. It was hard work designing and implementing, said Gerardi, but it was worth the effort. It creates movement, a view in a space which is normally stale. One of the most arresting parts of Savannah's interior design is that, with a few deliberate exceptions, there are no visible window frames. Where there are joints in the glass that sweeps in dark bands down the sides of the main deck, they are hidden behind the construction of the cabin walls and overhead. The glass wrapping the aft end of every deck, meanwhile, slides away to create a smooth link to Savannah's exterior, as do the VIP walls in the main deck sitting room, turning these spaces into super yacht terraces with superb views. Savannah shows how far builders and suppliers have advanced their expertise with glass. The Nemo Lounge, entered from the aft deck, is the ultimate expression of this. The bonus room adds a touch of whimsy and a very cool way to connect with water while staying dry. Its position aft, adjacent to the pool, makes it one of the most stable parts of the yacht and an excellent spot for watching sea life from stadium-style seating. Interestingly, it can also be a cinema with a drop-down screen covering the glass. Savannah's owner's suite, or owner's deck really, begins with a spacious outdoor seating area of scattered and built-in furniture and ends with a broad helicopter deck. In between are a dining room, saloon, service pantry, office, and a separate dressing area, a large marble bathroom, and the bedroom under an enormous skylight. Pentagraph doors at various locations allow deck access. The owner's suite is one of Girardi's favorites. I am very fond of its architecture. The double mullions in a metallic finish, the circular space, and the large skylight, it is very impressive. Stainless steel is used to great effect in bold, polished columns and furniture throughout Savannah. On the super yacht sun deck, the exhaust columns have been made into works of art that transition throughout the hardtop and exit as two pairs of twin funnels. Everywhere, the metallic theme continues on the painted surfaces. Savannah is the first super yacht to be given a complete metallic finish. Even the undersides of the exterior decks are painted sea foam metallic green. Fedship developed a special spray nozzle technique to accomplish the look, which had to be achieved in one sweep to avoid color discrepancy. Two teams of six painters began at Savannah's stern and moved up and down each side until they met at the bow in a carefully coordinated ballet. Tank tests showed Savannah is 7 or 8 percent more efficient than other displacement hulls the same length with standard twin shaft propulsion. It's not only the hull that's efficient, but also the hybrid propulsion system that gives Savannah five modes of operation. This flexibility in operation and in loading results in reduced emissions and fuel savings of some 30% compared to the best boats you know of. Better for the environment, uses less fuel, but also has the ability to give a boost to actual performance, so it's a win-win really for the client. The yacht blends the main diesel engine geared to a shaft, turning a huge variable pitch propeller with three gensets, a megawatt of storage batteries, and an azimuthing thruster. While some Japanese passenger ships use this method, Savannah is the first yacht to operate with a single azipul running in the slipstream of a variable pitch propeller. In line with Elon Musk's quest to sustain the environment, Savannah is the first first super yacht to feature an eco-friendly blend of a single diesel engine, three gen set batteries, propeller, azimuthing thruster, and a streamlined hull shape. Offering fuel economies of 30%, the pioneering electromechanical propulsion platform marries FedShip's past experience and forward-thinking approach within a pure custom creation. 
I wouldn't be surprised if this amazing feature is what attracted Musk to buying it. And now that the eccentric tech billionaire is the richest man on Earth, do you think you'll make some adjustments to the ship or leave it as it is? Let us know in the comments.